What confuses a new screenwriter the most? I think it's voice on the page. It is selecting a word choice that captures tone and style and develop, developing their original voice on the page. Um, it's a big thing. It is not totally quantifiable. I mean, you, it's, you can't really teach someone their voice. It's literally which words do you choose in a description paragraph to capture the moment. Um, and I think new writers don't quite get how important tone is, how important it is to capture the style and tone of a moment, of an individual scene, or even just a second of screen time. They should think as if they're watching that movie or TV show at that moment. What would the, what would the audience feel in that moment? And then try and recreate that with words on the page it might apply to paragraph breaks. It might, uh, punctuation might help. White space versus text. Everything adds up to creating the tone of that particular scene and the pace and the style. And you can't fully teach that, but I can give them enough notes and even like edits and I can say, here's how you might rewrite this description. Um, maybe if you were use a word that's a little bit stronger here, this one seems a little flat. Uh, I can push them in that direction, and then uh, hopefully they'll they'll get into the groove and feel their voice on the page, and it'll get to the second second hand. Do you ever have a writer think that they have a distinct voice, but it turns out they're really emulating their favorite author or screenwriter? It happens. It happens. Um, like I've had writers. Uh, write like really staccato short description lines and it's kind of just like too much you know it's too choppy so you know the opposite of that is those big thick description paragraphs you don't want those either but you do want kind of a balance between you know um, a smaller description paragraph maybe just one line of description maybe a bigger one you know use white space it should flow you don't want too long of monologues in your dialogue. Um, it is hard to quantify, but the page, uh, a good comedy page, feels different and maybe even looks different than a good uh, biopic page, you know. What are the biggest mistakes you see made over and over again in screenplays? Uh, I would say not capturing tone. Um, the tone of the scene in both description and dialogue, uh, having characters uh, not have distinctive voices in their dialogue, uh, too long, um, pacing's too slow, uh, on the nose dialogue, um, not getting us into the story as fast as possible. Because when that reader starts your script, from the get go, they want to know what the story is. What, what is the concept? What is the engine? What am I watching? And it doesn't mean you have to launch the engine at the bottom of page one. Of course, you can let it um, play out and take some time and surprise us. But just know that you can't have 30 pages of just setup before you even introduce any of the main uh, engines or main story elements, you know. Um, we're looking for what makes this unique and what is the journey we're going to follow. Can you explain what engine means? An engine is a character pursuing a goal against obstacles. And it's preceded usually by a catalyst. So they're thrown into a situation in which they're now pursuing a goal and there are antagonistic forces against them. Um, it usually your goals internal and external those are both engines so will the hero um, defeat the villain that's your external engine you know they're they're fighting to catch the villain and the villain is fighting against them or there's other factors in the way obstacles and then external will they reunite with their spouse okay so that's more of a, an emotional maybe romantic engine, but it's still an engine. They want to win back their spouse. 
and there are obstacles in between, you know? And so you can call that an engine, what's driving the story. With a uh, TV series, I like to define the compelling crisis, which is like the core of the drama. It's the core problem that that show is showcasing. And it's usually an engine. It's will this character achieve this, you know, against these obstacles. It's kind of a mini log line, if you will. Um, so you want to know what that core crux problem is. You probably want one in, in, a, in a pilot, you want an A and a B story, definitely. You might have a C and a D. You probably don't want to have, you know, also an E, F, G, H, I, J story. You don't want to have too many engines going unless it's a, a multi-character piece like White Lotus, like the White Lotus. Um, but even there, I think you really only have four separate um, engines, four separate camps, you know, with the different characters. Um, I think in season two, maybe they added, there were more characters, there was more going on, but that's a specific type of story. And it's an ensemble piece, it's a multi-character, and those are tougher to write, but that is a route you could go. Can we define what tone is? Can we give an example? Tone in screenplays is really word choice to create the feeling of a scene. And it's hard to quantify because there's, you know, a billion words you could use to capture a certain scene and that's really the special sauce that the writer brings. What words, punctuation, black versus white space on the page are they going to use to capture that tone? But um, if you think of, I mean, so something like Get Out, which has a creepy, scary tone, that's probably going to look different on the page than, you know, as good as it gets. Um, and it's hard, it, it depends on the example, of course, but I'm always um, trying to help my writers with the tone on the page, just saying, you know, if this is horror, are, should we be scared right now? Should we not? And sometimes with newer writers, it's hard to tell, you know, they're using different they're using kind of maybe more matter of fact words when, I, when I'll say, well, maybe use stronger words, maybe cut this sentence off with a dash. And so what's coming next will feel more abrupt. And maybe we picture it on our head different. You know, I've always have the projector going in my head. I'm always picturing the scenes, you know, playing on the screen as anyone does when they're reading a screenplay, they should be, you know. You're picturing the movie or the TV show that's playing out. So you want them to picture it as much, as close as possible to your version of the movie, you know? Um, that's impossible to do, and that's why you don't want to direct on the page. You don't want to use directorial terms, you know, pan left and close up, extreme close up. Um, you don't want to write like the director, like write camera, um, references because really you can't you can't explain how a scene looks or how a shot looks you know you couldn't really if I explained um, uh, a shot of a desert it doesn't mean you would think of it exactly like it appeared in Lawrence of Arabia you know we would have different thoughts about what that desert shot looked like so you don't want to try that much go that far to over explain. But word choice is really, really important and tone and feeling. Uh, Spielberg always said when he's listening to a pitch, he says, what is the audience feeling now? You know, so I want to know how it would feel if I was the audience member of this script I'm reading. So if I'm reading a script, let's say for the swingers and mm -hmm. I don't really know the movie versus the hangover, the two tones are definitely going to, even though there's like a similarity with some of it, not totally, mm -hmm. but there's going to be an obvious difference in this tone if it really works. I'm going to feel a different... There should be, yeah, yeah. I mean, those are both comedies, so maybe those are a little close, but um, uh, the Cohen, if you look at Coen Brothers' scripts, um, No Country for Old Men has some really interesting 
kind of literary text. Um, they use a lot of kind of more lofty language in their descriptions than you would normally use in a script, and they use a lot of description, um, more than I think probably a new unestablished writer should use. But if you get a chance to read No Country for Old Men, that's really interesting. Whiplash by Damien Chazelle, that has some really interesting uh, tonal choices. Um, yeah, it's all about uh, the words that you choose. That's writing. <laughs> Can you tell the difference between a screenplay where the goal is just to sell it versus the goal is to tell a compelling story? I think so. Uh, usually the one that they're only writing because they want to sell it, you just don't feel passion for the story. It's usually flatter. It's just written flatter. Um, there might be elements thrown in that come out of nowhere. They're not motivated. I mean, motivation is huge, and I feel like it gets more and more important for me the more scripts I read, more books I read, and the more movies I watch. Um, the more motivated actions are in a script, just the better. I don't know why, but uh, film is a visual medium, and you want to see um, if your character does something or they come upon something, we kind of want set up for it. We want to have something be motivated. We want, to know, we want to know why or how they got to this point. And a lot of beginner screenplays, it's too random. It's not necessarily motivated. I hear a lot of um, screenwriters tell me, but this happened to me in real life. This just random thing happened to me in real life. That happens, right? Well, movies and TV shows aren't random. Dramatic visual storytelling is not random. As an audience, we do want to see why something happens. We want to see the setup of it, you know, breadcrumbs leading up to the reveal, uh, setups before payoffs, um, lighting the bomb before the bomb goes off. So um, motivation and setup are very key. They're left out of a lot of modern work. Uh, I think too much. I find that I'm too confused when I watch, especially a lot of newer films. They throw you into the story too fast. We're entering the story too late and we have to catch up and put together what's going on. Who are these people? Is that their job? Where are they? You know, you don't want to start off with your audience confused. You know, they can be interested and compelled to find out more. But if they're confused and they just don't know what the hell's going on, that's not a good place to be anywhere in the script. <laughs>